This is All India Radio. In the national program tonight, we bring you a feature titled Moniram Diwan, Martyr Extraordinaire from the Northeast. It was 1857 and the first major outbreak of resistance against the colonial British Raj in India started with Mangal Pandey taking the lead on 10th of May at Meerut. The march towards Delhi by the disgruntled sepoys of the East India Company Army eventually culminated in the declaration of 81-year-old Mughal ruler Bahadur Shah Jafar as the Emperor of Hindustan. The British retaliated with a heavy hand and the revolt practically ended by the June of 1858 with a direct clash between the rebels and company forces at Gwalia. However, the British declared formal ending of hostilities only in July 1859. Many Indian rulers supported the company while quite a few along with the public joined the rebels in many places giving it a popular form. The rebellion fanned out to different parts of India. Taking advantage of the situation, more than 2,000 kilometers away from the epicenter of this 1857 revolt, in the province of Assam, a plan was made by some patriots to reinstate a prince of the Ahum kingdom on the throne. The plan accidentally got revealed even before it could be executed and the imperial authorities caught the leaders and after a sham of a trial hurriedly awarded capital punishment to Moniram Dewan, a patriot with multifaceted personality. This Martya extraordinaire from northeast India was popularly known for his brilliance and administrative acumen being as he was an advisor and administrator, both of the Ahom monarchy and the colonial company administration in Assam. Moniram Dewan was above all an entrepreneur and the first Indian tea planter. Moniram Dewan, in a way, symbolizes the historic connection of Northeast India with the mainland India. Speaking on the ancestry of Moniram Dewan, Professor Udayaditya Bhorali, a noted historian and former principal of Cotton College, states, Moniram was born not in any Ahom family, but in a Kayasta family. In 1527 and 1532, Ahom kingdom was attacked by the Turko Afghans under the leadership of Turbok. Those attacks were repelled successfully and many of the attacking soldiers were made prisoners by the Ahom forces. One of the captured soldiers was Gaurodhas Singh. Realizing his qualities, he was inducted into Ahom nobility by Sargodho Suhungmung. Moniram was a descendant of Gaurodhas. Gurudhar married one girl of the Barabhuya, Srimanta Sankardev, the great Assamese new Vaishnavite saint, was the member of the Barabhuyas. The original home of Gurudhar was in the Kanauj area. Ramdatta was the father of Moniram. He, alongside his family, lived in exile during the depredations of the Burmese at a place called Silamari of Bengal. Regarding the education of Moniram Dewan, Professor Bhorali states, The initial education of Moniram was given by a local Bengali home tutor. When his family returned to Assam, Ramdatta brought one Bengali pundit from Navadip 
who taught Moniram Sanskrit, Bengali, and Persian. This was how Moniram became well versed not only in his mother tongue but also in Sanskrit, Bengali, and Persian. On the other hand, Ramdotto, who was an efficient administrator, imparted necessary instruction and training to his son Moniram regarding administrative affairs and statecraft. Dr. Rojit Kumar Dotto, who did his doctoral research on Moniram Dewan and authored the book Moniram Dewan and the Contemporary Assamese Society, also speaks of Ram Dotto, father of Moniram. Ram Dotto was appointed Dulaka Surya Burua by King Kamaleswar Singh and King Purandar Singh. He was so efficient that King Purandar Singh appointed him again in the same post during his protectorate. This family background certainly molded Moniram's career. The significance of Moniram Dewan's life for 51 years, from his birth on 17th April 1806 till his martyrdom on 26 February 1858, is that it spanned both the old and the new in terms of polity and economy, as well as the society that was being swept by the momentous changes unleashed by the colonial encounter. In this period of transition, Moniram Dewan's unparalleled capabilities and diligence became quite evident. Professor Udayaritta Bhorali states, Moniram's manifold qualities, particularly his sound knowledge of the history and geography of Didan Assam impressed the British very much. In April 1824, the British forces under David Scott and Captain Horsberg started their march from British-occupied Bengal to Guwahati to expel the Burmese depredators who were creating troubles in British Bengal too. The British officers in charge of that march invited Moniram and Boloram Khadgoria Fukon to escort their army through places like Roha Khagorijan, present in Nogong. After the British occupation, the main problem of administering Assam was not military but financial administration. So, to help him in this regard, David Scott appointed Moniram as his chief advisor. In 1813, the Ahum Sargodo Purandar Singh was restored as a tributary Raja. Moniram was made the Borbhandar Borua, that is the head of the royal treasury, and Sankakoti, the head accountant. He too was entrusted to look after the Raja's forces of 400 sepoys. At the same time, Moniram continued to be the Sirastadar and the Sildar of the company's government in Assam. Regarding the lifestyle of Moniram Dewan, as he encountered the old and new regimes, Dr. Ojit Dotto states, Moniram was a child of modernity. That modernity was assert in Assam by the British company Raj. Moniram could not sense his traditional lifestyle. In spite of close contact with British officers in Calcutta, the hub of modernity, Moniram lived like an Ahom Dangoria, a novel, and, of course, imitating the life of a medieval novel, Moniram married four wives, had a residence at eight places. He had about 300 family members, including attendants and menials. About 21 items were prepared for his daily meal. He travelled in palanquin, earlier used by the Ahom kings and the nobles. However, Moniram was sober, proud and arrogant. He developed good relations with the Assam neighbouring hill tribes. Like Ahom rulers, Moniram patronised both Vaishnavism and Saktism. With the background of a gentry in the Ahom rule, 
Moniram grew to be bourgeois under the British Raj. He exploited his family tradition, wealth, his own intellect and ability to make himself a typical feudal aristocrat. Moniram Dewan was an entrepreneur and the first Assamese capitalist. He contributed a lot towards promotion of tea cultivation in Assam. As Professor Bhorali states, According to an Assamese chronicle, Moniram went into the Singpo territories. He brought samples of tea plants to his residence in uh, Orjunguri near Sipsagar. In 1837, the tea business formally started in Assam. In 1839, the East India Company, as for the advice of Captain Jenkins, the chief administrator of Assam, appointed Moniram as the Diwan of Assam Tea Company. Two tea gardens were started by the company with Moniram's help. However, on the question of bringing labor to work in the tea gardens of Assam, Moniram developed a quarrel with the British administration. Meanwhile, Moniram's relation with C.A. Bruce, the government nominee in the Assam company, was also strained, which finally led to the resignation of Moniram from the divanship of Assam company. Dr. Rojit Kumar Dotto adds, He was attracted by economic modernism of the time. He had motive for profit, so engaged himself on coal and salt supply, elephant trade, excise mahal, building construction, etc., etc. Elaborating the entrepreneurial initiatives of Moniram Dewan, Professor Bhorali adds, In 1842, Moniram, after resignation from the Dewanship, started immediately to build his tea garden at a place called Sinamora, near Zurhat, and another at Sanglung in Sipsagar district. Thus, Moniram became the first native capitalist in Assam to challenge the might of the British economically. Moniram also tried to develop his own company and started coal mines in the Tiru Hill area. He also organized mills to produce salt from the salt springs of Borhat and Jaipur. He installed 40 blacksmiths to manufacture matchlock and midda, a kind of local digger. Moniram participated in the Great London Exhibition by sending goods produced by his company and won a gold medal and a certificate of merit for the quality of his exhibits. However, Moniram was not in a position to compete with the British manufactured goods due to colonial restrictions. The Sinamora Tea Estate, established by Moniram, was later taken up by the government and managed under the Assam Tea Corporation. The present manager of the garden, Mr. Sorup Juti Deka, says, Moniram Dewan opened this tea garden, Chinnamara. And now we are maintaining this tea garden very well. And we are 2,064 permanent labor. And area is just 750 hectares area under tea plantation. And as a whole, grand total area is 2,022 hectares. We are producing here 11 lakhs kg made tea per year. Moniram was a well-read person who also contributed to the literary world. Like other aristocrats of the old Ahum regime, Moniram Dewan wrote Burunjis. His Burunji Bibek Ratno can specially be mentioned in this regard. Dr. Chandan Horma, head, Department of History, Debrugge University, says, Burunji Bibek Ratno, it had two volumes. Unfortunately, the first volume is lost. When you try to understand in the context of the whole tradition of Burunji literature in Assam, the whole writing of Burunji or history, it underwent transformation after the coming of colonialism. Pre-colonial Burunjis, they were chronicles of the state and the kings. But the moment Assam was incorporated within the British imperial system, the British governance demanded 
that there should be more reports, gadgets, surveys, census, which basically speaks about the people, its social reality, its social mosaic, caste questions, religious structure, etc. And that's why we see 1838 December, Burundi Vipak Ratna second volume was completed. And if we try to understand Burundi Vipak Ratna, we also find that it does not just compile the last years of the decline of the Ahom monarchy. Along with that one, it contains detailed analysis of Assam's religious structure, the classification, the different kinds of court rituals, the duties, the governance system of the different nobilities, then different kinds of Mohapurukhya Parampara, the sectarian division within that Mohapurukhya Parampara, which in Assamese is called that Honghoti Vibhajan. These were discussed in detail because he was trying to have some kind of a very detailed dossier about the society of Assam. So that is the way we should try to understand Burundi Vipak Ratna. Unfortunately, the first volume is lost. Otherwise, it could have been one of the most finest products which was written by indigenous scholar. And of course, before that, uh, another Burundi was written by Holiram Thakyal Fukan. So this is a new kind of trend of the Burundis. Dr. Ojit Dotto adds. Besides Bhakti Pradeep, Borbhya Suritra and other works are his literary contribution to the Assamese literature. Besides his petitions to AJM Mafat Mills and the government are important sources of history of his time. He also wrote in Bengali papers. Uh, they are Samasar Darpan and uh, Samasar Sandrika. He contributed articles in Journal of Asiatic Society of Bengal and Transactions of Horticultural and Society of Bengal, etc. He was a patron of Arunudaya also. He contributed money. It also reflects this uh, religious mind. That was a Christian paper and he contributed for it. He promoted it. Meanwhile, Moniram Dewan gradually became disillusioned with the British because of their policies, which were extractive and did not consider the welfare of the people. The patriot in him wanted to reinstate the old Ahom monarchy. As Dr. Ojit Kumar Dotto says, The British government imposed high revenue rate on the riots. The alien government imposed land tax at the rate of 50% of productions. Even on Nuni trees, where Muga were fed, were also taxed. Epidemics and natural calamities added salt to the injury of the riots. The government didn't take any step for improvement of agriculture and general conditions of the people. Opium eating was encouraged rather to make the people indolent and servile. Judiciary was ill-suited to the simple habit of the people. Justice was time-consuming and costly. With these grievances, Moniram submitted petitions to A.S.M. Mafat Mills, a judge who came to report on Assam to the government. Moniram also wrote that imposition of Bengali as medium of instruction and court language in 1837 was a setback to education for a rising generation. Hill people of Assam were also disaffected. A line of difference between hill and plain people was drawn. These things were also alleged by Moniram. Adding to Dr. Dotto, Professor Bhorali says, But the British authority turned down However, this did not suppress Moniram's enthusiasm completely, and he decided to proceed to Calcutta to place before the Governor General personally, on behalf of Condor Pastor Singh, and on his own. On May 1857, he submitted petitions to the Governor General, but there was no concrete positive response from the British authority. It was in this critical situation Moniram lost all his patience and out of desperation tried to win the situation for him and the Ahom King. Dr. Ojit Kumar Dotto continues. In the meantime, Indian sepoys of British in the army both took the standard of revolt protecting against discrepancy between them and the British soldiers. Moniram found common cause with them got prepared to restore the Ahom Kingdom. He, with Madhu Mallik, a Bengali gentleman, 
prepared a plan of action against the British. He even established contact with Kumar Singh, the famous rebel leader of Uttar Pradesh. Pioli Burwa became Maniram's lieutenant. Bahadur Gangbura and Farmu Dali, two influential persons of the Muslim community in Jorhat, joined hands with Maniram. Twenty Ahom nobles and many others from different corners of Assam also supported Maniram. However, the strong imperial British government suppressed the uprisings. Maniram and Piali Burwa were hanged in Jorhat, Bahadur Gangbura, Farmunali, and many others were sent to the central jail of Andaman. Professor Bhorali says, As Moniram was in Calcutta during those days, on the day Saring Raja was arrested at Zurhat, Moniram was also arrested at Calcutta. He was transported to Zurhat immediately, giving no chance to appeal to the Governor General. Moniram arrived at Zurhat on 22nd of February 1858. And on the very next day, was brought to Holroyd's court. After making a mockery of justice in a single day trial, Holroyd passed a death sentence on Moniram on 25 February 1858. That date was already fixed for the hanging of Pioli Borwa as well. Both were hanged openly on 26 February 1858 at about 10 a.m. Thus came to an end the illustrious career of Muniram Diwan. Muniram Diwan left an indelible impact on the life and times of Assam. His passing away was mourned in many ways. Ballads were composed. and sung to lament the loss of such an extraordinary person dilie koribor jamur devta kaurie koribor ka dr chandan horma states basically moniram dewan or git which dealt with the life of moniram dewan these were produced just after his execution in 1858 and these also uh, contains profound grief the way he was publicly executed because he was held in a very high esteem at that particular point of time uh, they were spoken at multiple points of time and there were little bit variations but we can understand how was the people's perception at that point of time roi roi kandile sumare baduli the bats started crying the crickets started weeping his friends started mourning as moniram was hanged to death Everyone of his native place couldn't stop their cry. Moniram, who united the people of the region by his supreme sacrifice, took the ultimate shelter in Jorhat. Eke raj kori le, lole jure ha to tha. The Homadhi stall. or burial site of Moniram Dewan is lighted with lamps on India's Independence Day and Republic Day as Prahant Kumar Hoykia the president of Jorhat Chamber of Commerce informs to mere ko jo pata chala tro manager of this garden ki yahan Moniram Dewan ka yahan samadhi sthal yahan hai lekin unka koi pehchan nahi tha humne bola how it is possible aise to peoples par ke gira hua hai inka to koi recognition nahi hai to unhone bataya nahi ye barabar to regular jo district authority hai and the panchayat also un log to diwa jalate hain har 15 august ko and 26 january mein dono jalate hain garden ka labor bhi jalate hain aur mainly jo district authority log bhejte hain regularly log bhejte the aur yahan diya jalate the humne decide kiya to within the members humne kisi ko bola nahi ki hum log ka andar se hum log contribute kar lenge isko banane ke liye then within 2 3 months humne complete कर लिया एंड 26 जनवरी ऑफ 2018 में हमने इसको इनोग्रेट कर दिया ऑफिशियली देयर आर मेमोरियल्स एंड रोड्स नेम्ड आफ्टर मोनीराम देवान इन हिज ऑनर द मोनीराम देवान रोड एंड द मोनीराम देवान ट्रेड सेंटर एट गुवाहाटी और द मोनीराम देवान हॉस्टल एट डिब्रुगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी आर पार्ट ऑफ सच एफर्ट्स द लेगेसी ऑफ दिस मार्टियर एक्स्ट्रोऑर्डिनरी हैज बीन अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ मच एकेडमिक डिस्कशन एज ही हैज बीन पोर्ट्रेट डिफरेंटली एट डिफरेंट टाइम्स Dr Chandan Horma elaborates In 1858 there was a news about the execution of Moniram Dewan in Orunodoy now Orunodoy 
when he was addressed, he was addressed as Sri Zud Moniram. But in the report about his death and execution, he was mentioned only as Moniram. Sri Zud was omitted because he was associated with anti-British activities. Now, immediately after that one, if we try to understand it from historiography, that Koli Bharat Bulonji, it was written by Dutiram Hajorika. Now, this chronicle in a brief verse states that innocent persons were made scapegoat in 1858 and avoids any description to make Moniram Dawan a rebel. It was in 1862. Now, if we try to contextualize, we will see that the first biographical account, which was known as Jibana Dorho, it was written by Nil Kumud Borua and he was the son-in-law of Moniram Dawan. In this biographical account, Moniram has been represented not as a rebel but as a victim of personal conspiracy. In Junaki, that review was written by Ratneshwar Mohanta. He described Moniram as a great scholar and politician. According to Mohanta, had he been born in Germany, France or England, he would have been a great person. He also stated that Moniram was falsely implicated. Now, the image of Moniram that he was falsely implicated by some personal vendetta was not shared by Edward Gates. Edward Gates, a history of Assam, it was published in 1905. He stated that Moniram was a rebel who actively participated and conspired against the Raj. Now, the next phase, Moniram's biography was written by Benudar Horma, which was published in 1950. So in this way, the memory of a uh, nationalist rebel represented in Assamese literature and in the freedom struggle. A biographical movie by the name Moniram Dewan was released in 1963, where the legendary singer Dr. Bhupen Hajorika sang. <laughs> Moniram Dewan continues to inspire the generations today. The great grandson of Moniram Dewan, Dr. Suranjit Borua, states, As a descendant from his family, we are very proud. And uh, not me only, we all, Assamese people are very proud of him. He is the first martyr of Assam that is hanged in public. So that inspired the people of Assam at that time to fight against the British government. Yes, now, on this 75th year of India's independence, which is being celebrated as Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, one can only hope that the ultimate sacrifice of Moniram Dewan, the martyr extraordinaire from Northeast India, and an epitome of brilliance in the fields of administration, entrepreneurship and literature, would continue to inspire the generations to come. <laughs> My mother's heart trembles with worry. Who has stolen my mother's sleep? As your son, what do I do to free you from this misery? To relieve your worry, I'm ready to die. In the national program, you just heard a feature titled Moniram Dewan, Martyr Extraordinaire from the Northeast. Narration was rendered by Dr. Shamanto Borua. The feature was scripted by Professor Rajiv Handik. It was produced by Lohit Deka with assistance in production from Khurshid Ahmed and Indrajit Das. Musical rendition was by Rajin Gohai and Tulika Senapati. A contribution of All India Radio Dibrugar, this was a presentation of the Central English Features Unit and came to you from the Delhi station of All India Radio.